I will call this regular meeting of council uh, to order for uh, March 28th, 2022. I would like to recognize that we're on uh, Treaty 5 land, the traditional land of Nature's Ways of Creation and Homeland Hedeman. Thank you. Uh, I'd like an approval of the agenda. Madam Mayor? Yes. Since I'm the mover of the uh, one of the bylaws, I'd like to lift it from the table for tonight. By what 2023 2022, please. Yes, a clarification what do you mean? Lifted, it's already on the table. It's on the table. It means I don't want to have the discussion tonight. Lift it. Unless there's objection. Oh, we're moving from the agenda. We move, sorry. Oh, I see. You would like it to be moved from the agenda. Yes. You're making a motion? No, we just, if there's someone object, then you need a second. Uh, needs a motion, right? Yes. I'll second the motion. motion. To uh, uh, you're going to second it? Yeah. Councilor Fountain? All those in favor? Okay. Uh, opposed? Aye. Uh, Carrie for removing it. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, yeah, so subsequently, we have to remove the third reading as well. So we'll take care of that. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Madam Mayor, if I could. Mm -hmm. So just for clarification, it's it's now removed from the agenda. It's not to come back, correct? It doesn't come back. It's removed. It's not tabled. It'll have to come back eventually to either defeat it or carry mm -hmm. it. It's a long bylaw. So, so we don't set a time for it. We haven't set a time for it. We're just saying remove it. Okay. This is why we like to do these things ahead of time so we can plan them. Yeah. So that's the thing. You're correct. We're going to have to set a date for so bringing we, it back to council. So we can do that later on. Yeah. In addition, Madam Mayor, today, uh, as administration, I hope remembers, uh, we were to bring back the discussion with respect to. Uh, a public town hall regarding the, the new pool or so pool decision. Uh, we've tabled the old pool one now without any date. The date has come and gone. That's passed with no uh, resolution uh, while the old pool crumbles away. The, uh, we had decided as a council, this was the timing and today was the day that we would have a decided date for a public town. If I remember the resolution correctly. So I'm asking to be that to be brought off the table for discussion today, because it was scheduled to be brought to off the table today. Meeting. And okay, let's uh, let's deal with this 2022-2023. Uh, Are we going to put a date on it tonight, or not? That we want to bring it back to the table. I don't, I don't know why we would be in the area to put a date to them. There's, as Councillor Fountain has already stated, there's other resolutions that have no date to put it on. So I think we should deal with these before we would deal with this. Uh, they, this would have, they would have more of a uh, precedent that's been outstanding for a long time. Okay. Also, uh, they uh, may have precedent they were on the table for, but this one is time sensitive that if it doesn't come back on the table shortly, uh, then we will lose the opportunity to change it. Yes. I don't think it's debatable right now. Once we already done the vote, it's all move on. It's not debatable. When we start debating that as well, just move on to the agenda for tonight and then that's it. If you want to agree with the bring it back, the councillor uh, found about the uh, others, so we just bring it back. If you all agree, then we do it. If not, then move on for the rest of the night. Shouldn't be debate on that. Uh, councillor Valentino. Uh, thank you, Mayor Smook. Um, yeah, I think we're just at the approval of the agenda. So uh, if we're bringing this motion back, yeah, I would like to see it brought back and or the bylaw back at the next regular meeting of council since it's been put to the public and it's out in in the public. So um, it is the role of council to uh, debate and vote. So I'd like to see it brought back, but I'd like to see the agenda move forward also so we can 
Continue. Thank you. Are we start debating for the agenda again? Like you say, you we asked her to be removed from the agenda. Yeah, we all just moved. Done. We already moved, caught a uh, question. It's already voted. So mm -hmm. that was already. For that part, part now, now is his part. Are we going to bring that uh, resolution back to discuss about the old pool or new pool? If not, let's put up a, a motion and then go from there. We could actually bring them both back, uh, Anthony, if we want it. Okay. Both of them will have to be brought back at some point. Uh, if I may point out, just adding on to the, the request to untable those items, we had dates assigned to those, so I have actually no issue with the date being assigned to the other item that was removed. Uh, but it, the, the whole point of having those dates assigned was because we were to uh, have a logical progression of decision making so that we would be, if should the need arise, that we would be able to go and move ahead with construction or whatever, if it was the old pool or the new pool. Uh, when conditions and climate um, allow, but by continually delaying um, a decision on the old pool versus the new pool, we're, uh, I think, put the old structure at risk when it shouldn't be, um, and certainly not involving the public in the new pool has been a, a mistake in my mind. So I, I would like to bring both those back for discussion today, if it's possible. I know we do have the tour of the old pool coming this week for us to dance. I think you need to vote on each one separate. Mm -hmm. uh, Councillor McMurdo? Uh, yeah, I was just going to say um, I, I would like to see uh, the, the tables uh, by law uh, brought, brought back in two weeks' time. And with respect to the, the pool, um, as council's aware, admin has provided us with an update with um, some information that isn't ready to go public with. And, and as you had stated, we do have the pool of the Norplex um, schedule, or the tour of the Norplex schedule to the 31st. So with, with that suggestion, if, if Councillor Fountain is, is okay, can we put that on the next week's agenda as well? So that administration as well as the rest of council can prepare for the discussion, although I, I do realize that we said Q1 2022, um, there's other moving pieces at, um, in play. Thanks. So are we okay for bringing both these items back for the, it would be the April 4th? 4th oh. April 11th. April 11th meeting? I don't have an object, objection as long as that's um, as long as that's uh, respected. But really, you should be just taking a vote as opposed to debating. I think. Call for mover for setting the April eleventh date. Okay, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to delay it till April eleventh. April eleventh. Yeah. Okay. Can I have a seconder? seconder. Wonder. All those in favor? Aye. Right. Aye. Anything else? Okay. Um, can I have uh, an approval of the agenda as amended then, please? Councillor Wong, Councillor Prue, all those in favor? Aye. Uh, next to the community comments and feedback. I do believe, Anthony, you have some answers for questions we had on the last one. I'll yeah, let you go correct. first. Um, so there's a question at the last meeting read with respect to a check to 0033985, set our welding and septic. Um, according to our records, that is a check for work that was done in 2021. Yeah, we received the invoice February 2021. Um, it's to reline the track box on unit 716, which is a 2015 international tandem. The labor was 1944 or 1,944, and the materials were $7,218.80 plus tax for a total cost of 10,262.34. Uh, you did say that the invoice was received February, 2021. Did you make me mean February, 2022? February, 2022 was for work in 2021. Yes. Thank you. Uh, does that answer questions, sir? It does for that one. Thank you, sir. 
Uh, now we will open the floor for questions. Please state your name and. Ron Matichuk, 20 Ash Street. Uh, I'd like to make reference to what Councillor Fountain was uh, just getting at. What was actually said was the just not necessarily the decision, but the discussion would be by the end of March uh, on the Norplex pool. And the reason being, it, it was decided in that it, I believe it was November that Christmas coming up and everything else, uh, you'd be tripping over yourselves to be any sooner. So it was decided at that time that it would be the end of March. And this is the last meeting of March, 2022. So it, sh it should have been, someone dropped the ball on that. Thank you, sir. Okay. okay, next I have a question. I hear a lot in this chamber, as well as what I read, that there are issues with the new uh, sewer treatment plant, sewage treatment plant. And uh, a lot of it is the fact that they have to haul a lot of the material, which did not have to be done with the old plant. Now, is that sewage treatment plant that we paid $36 million for, is it not working? Did we maybe receive a dud for $36 million? It doesn't appear to be working. There are ongoing uh, issues with the operation of the sewage treatment plant at this time. Um, council has the administration preparing a report for council to review what the issues are. Okay, next, the uh, last uh, check register had an additional $26,000 for red septic services. I believe that was also for that. We are looking in the neighborhood of $200,000 and as far as I'm told so far, it has not been tendered. It's a gift. And at the last meeting I attended the, the committee of the whole, there was a procurement policy in there and nowhere does it allow for such things. But I guess that's not this week. It'll be hopefully the, the next regular council meeting. Thank you, sir. Anything further? We'll move to adoption of the minutes. 5.1 is a regular meeting of council, March 14, 2022. Resolution 2022-054, moved by Councillor Wong, seconded by Councillor Ellsworth. It resolved that the minutes of the regular meeting of council held in Council Chambers City Hall, Thompson, Manitoba, on Monday, March 14, 2022, be adopted as circulated. Administration? Yeah, nothing further. Councillor, any comments? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five point two is adoption of minutes for committee of the whole, March twenty first, twenty twenty two. Resolution 2022-055, moved by Councillor Fountain, set by Councillor Proof. Be it resolved that the minutes of the Committee of the Whole held in Council, Chamber, City Hall, Thompson, Manitoba, on Monday, March 21st, 2022, be adopted as circulated. Administration? Nothing further. Council? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Carried. Resolutions 6.1 is a motion to lift the table resolution 2021-162 Manitoba Air Lease Extension. Resolution 2021-162 moved by Councillor Valentino, seconded by Councillor Ellsworth, whereas on October 18th, 19th, 2020, Council passed resolution number 2020167, mm -hmm. approving to extend the term of the lease agreement for one year between the City of Thompson and the Manitoba Air Service Branch for Lot 2 Plan Number 5094 PLTO North Division, consisting of 
250.011 square feet. And oh, 250,000, 11 square feet, sorry. And whereas Manitoba Air Services requested to extend the term of buoys for a further one year commencing October 1st, 2021 and expiring September 2022. And whereas the cost of the lease is $5,036 pursuant to the City Thompson annual fee and fine schedule. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Council extend the term of the subject lease for a further one year commencing October 1st, 2021 and expiring September 30th, 2022. For lot two, plan 5094 PLTO, North Division, Manitoba Services Air Branch. Administration? Sorry, um, the motion to lift has to go through first and then oh. the resolution. Is what okay. I mean. So we require a mover and a seconder to lift it from the table. Okay. Sorry about that. May I have a, do I have a mover to lift this from the table? Madam Mayor, before yeah. we, we call for the question, I'd like to make a comment about this uh, 6.1. So I, I believe that time when we do the tabling, Excuse this, me, I just want to ask for clarification. We haven't lifted from the table, so we likely can't discuss it here yet, right? This is a simple motion just to lift it from the table. Really not a time to debate okay. it. And then we could we could ask your questions after it's lifted. Okay. Good enough. Do I have a motion? Do I have a mover to lift it from the table? Councillor Proof, do I have a seconder? I'd right, second. Okay. Councillor McMurdo, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? It's carried. Okay, um, would you like me to read it again now that it's listed? No, you're, you're, you're fine, okay, I appreciate that. Um, administration, first. So, so this is um, a resolution to extend the land lease. Um, this was presented at a previous meeting of council where council brought up concerns with some environmental concerns that were on the property. Um, and there's a direction to table this um, to a future date of council, which was given. Um, unfortunately, council or uh, administration had to work with the province on clarifying the information that was requested. That information has not been received until now. Now that the information is within the uh, administration's receipt, this motion has, or this resolution has been brought back in front of council for council's further consideration on the extension of the line links. Thank you. And supporting documents are attached to the council. Councillor Wong. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, I, I'm a little bit disappointed about this uh, motion uh, resolution. Reason is because last time, because we, we, we don't have enough information and also council raised the, uh, the, the question about the environment and all that. So uh, normal, uh, back in the day when we practice, so when we have such a thing, we always bring it back to the community to discuss about it. So last committee at home, we didn't even have that opportunity to discuss. What if there's something we need to add more or asking question, but we don't have the opportunity. So what I'm trying to point it out is like the disappointment is first, the committee at home does not work because we did not bring this issue back to discuss. And second of all, now, yes, even you read the, the memo from uh, not the public, but we can read it. It did not say when, and you just say, we already scheduled to do the, the, the environment thing. So to me, it's not satisfied enough to go ahead because again, if this issue been brought up at the committee at the whole, we can have all that debate in, instead of tonight here. So that's why I think this is wrong. I tried to do that earlier because like the first uh, uh, resolution, but it's just, you say it's a lifting, so whatever. So now it's just, be, could uh, create a problem for us to, to have more this uh, debate now, which is could be just a, a housekeeping uh, agenda. So anyway, I'm going to ask for record vote. And thank, thank you. you. Uh, okay. So council does not want to review and discuss this tonight. Uh, they can be tabled and sent uh, with directions to send it back to committee the whole. So that's always council's prerogative through the way that's committee the whole works. Thank you. Uh, council problem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. As you recall, I, I pointed this out when we were about to review uh, this. Um, can you give the public a rough estimate of how much time we've had this table for? I believe this was brought forward in November or something like that. Either in November or December, I believe it was tabled. And since then, the administration has been working to get the information back to council. Oh, please. Um, so in 
that amount of time, which is roughly four to five months, depending on when in, in November we had this. What you have here for us is what the work that's been done. Um, I, I know the person from Development Technical Services has got a good knowledge of this work. I'm disappointed in that the areas uh, that were to be remediated weren't even identified on the site map. Uh, there's no date assigned to when this work will be conducted or when it will be done by or who will be doing it in the environmental phase letter. As a matter of fact, that's probably one of the weakest letters I've ever seen come out of the province. Um, and it's just, this is five minutes of work. Uh, for me, uh, if we're going to be leasing out prime property like that for $5,000, uh, at some point, uh, there's opportunities to do stuff like that, uh, really good things in, the, uh, in those locations. But if we've uh, dropped A1 fuel, uh, sorry, aviation gas all over the place there, is this the case in my opinion, it's my opinion and my observations. Uh, we really limit uh, what we can and can't do there in the future. I'm not satisfied with this at all. There's no way I can support this, having a, a good knowledge of how this process works. I'm disappointed. Thank you. Thank you. Councilor McMurdo. Uh, yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Uh, th this, um, I think Councilor Fountain does raise some, some good points and, and certainly there could have been um, more definitive information to who's gonna carry out the work when it's gonna be done by. And, and I think given that this is his specialty, this is his day job, um, I, I, I do respect his opinion on that. And um, I, I don't think that I'll be supporting this as is either. And I think that we should reach out to the province and, and get some uh, more concise answers with respect to that um, in terms of when it's going to be happened, who's carrying it out. And I, I don't know if Councillor Fountain um, thinks that the, I think it was 10 samples is sufficient, but if we need to do more testing, then um, I, I defer to his opinion and expertise on that. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Ellsworth. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Um, I'm very disappointed as well. We talked about committee work. We went to the committee of the whole. And when I open up my agenda late on a Friday afternoon and find out there's things under that we hadn't got the opportunity to discuss in the committee of Dole. It, it really bothers me because that's why it will not work if we continue to do that. Things are being missed. I agree with the city manager. If we feel that way, we should bring them back. And I believe we should not debate it here tonight. I think the information is insufficient. And I will tell you from my own personal experience from that area, I don't think two samples either. I've seen some big spills in there, but yet I've never seen anyone clean it up over the years been camping at McCready Park and take a walk set around that area. So I would suggest Mayor uh, Smoot that you would uh, call for a vote to send it back to the committee of the old. Thank you. Okay, would that be the process after? Need someone to, basically, yes, we need to, to table it and then send it back to the committee of the old. Motion so to table. Move to table, okay. second Motion by uh, Bess to table it, uh, to go back to the committee of the old and second. Can I get a point of privilege, please? Okay. Uh, Again, sorry to cut that motion off, but I just want to make it absolutely clear that I made no comment on whether 10 points of reference were sufficient. I'm not com commenting from that point of view. I, my concern was specifically, and I'll spell it out again, that there's no data signed with this, nor are the two sites that they're saying are um, potential sites, nor they're not listed on the site map, which is problematic. And so it's council doesn't know where those sites are. And that's it. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that for the public record. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, can I have a seconder for Councillor Elsworth's motion? Uh, motion approved. That. All those in favor? All right. Carried. Six point three is a resolution to approve the tabulation of prices for the design, supply, and installation of a new play structure, included rubberized surfacing from the for Foundation Park administration. Oh, 
Resolution 2022056, moved by Councillor Ellsworth. I need a seconder for this motion, please. Councillor Wong. Yeah. Thank you. Administration, speak on that. Sure. Uh, the city of Thompson received um, funding for hundred thousand dollars from the Thompson Community Foundation to upgrade the playground oh, equipment. I didn't read the motion. I'm sorry. I got the seconder. Oh. I did jump ahead to you. Okay. Be resolved that council approve the recommendation of the purchasing agent and award the proposal for the design, supply, and installation of a new play structure, including rubberized surfacing to j and Penner Limited for the price of $99,995, plus additional taxes as per tender file number 10122. There, now. So the city of Thompson received funding for $100,000 from the Thompson Community Foundation to upgrade the playground equipment at what was known as uh, Eastwood Park. Um, upon accepting the funding, City Council passed Resolution 2020-051, renaming Eastwood Park as the Foundation Park. Um, as was noted, the um, playground equipment was tendered through our RP process. There were two bids on it, and uh, the administration has analyzed the bids and has made a recommendation of the top, uh, the top proposal received to J.D. Penner Limited. Thank you. Councillor Alford? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think this is a very successful story. Certainly want to give thanks to the Thompson Community Foundation for the great work here. And anyone that want to give the city $100,000 to name a park will certainly, I believe, uh, get support from council to do that. Um, this is a very low cost for the city. It's not like it's a new park. It's an existing park that needed work to be done. That's an area that really needs to park up there. And I'm, I'm fully supportive of it. And again, I'm very appreciative of the fact that we have organizations in the town, in Thompson, that certainly looks to what's happening around Thompson and is willing to support a monetary, in some cases, with some hired help as well. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, other comments, Councillors? Councillor Proof? Uh, I just want to note I'll be abstaining from the vote for conflict on the board. Okay, Councillor Proof will be abstaining from the vote as he is on the Community Foundation Board. Uh, any other comments from councillors? Oh, Councillor Fountain, sorry. Uh, Madam Mayor, I want to uh, uh, explain myself here because I won't be supporting this. Um, it's a cruel man who doesn't support a uh, <laughs> almost free playground. And I, I want to make it clear that it's uh, not that I don't think that this area deserves it. It certainly does. Um, what I'm worried about, and I'm start, starting to sound again like a, a broken record, uh, but we have um, a ticking time bomb with the amount of infrastructure we need to maintain. I think that uh, we already have a number of parks that have demonstrated and shown that they're dangerous, that need to be decommissioned. Um, there hasn't been any decommissioning. Well, I, I, I believe we took out an old pool, but uh, a waiting pool. But um, I'm seeing problems coming down the line. So. My apologies to the kids in Eastwood. I certainly, uh, it sounds like you're going to get your park. That's nice. Um, I'm cognizant of the, the greater, bigger picture here. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counter comments? Okay. Uh, uh, I also right? think we should recognize, I believe, the president of the I was, presentation. Is there? I was going to, yeah. Okay, right. thank you. Uh, no other comments? Okay. Uh, I do uh, definitely will be supporting this park because it is an existing park that has just been upgraded. There's already operational dollars that is attached to this park. And I do believe with the upgrades that has been done in the last couple of years and turning it into a splash park, that there could be dollar savings and uh, <coughs> making it definitely uh, accessible is uh, number one on the city's list for working on park. And uh, I would like to uh, recognize that Dave Moore from the <coughs> Community Foundation is in the chamber, and also that Andre Poole on council is a member of the Thompson Community Foundation. So with that being said, I'll call for the question and uh, we'll go from there. Thank you, Dave. Uh, call for the question. All those in favor of the Foundation Park dollars? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm opposed. Thank you very much, Mr. Moore. We appreciate you.
the work through the community foundation. And I think the note that comes to prove uh, did not look. A6.4 is a resolution to approve the tabulation of prices for traffic line painting. Resolution 2022057, moved by Councillor Fountain, accepted by Councillor Proof. Be a result that Council approved the recommendation of the purchasing agent and award the tender for traffic line painting to AAA Striping and Seal Coating Service for the tendered price of $26,000. <coughs> plus applicable taxes as per tender file number 10522. Administration? Yeah, the city of Thompson has about 34 kilometers of roads that require line painting each year. Um, in previous years, the Manitoba infrastructure would come and paint the lines, but as their service models have changed in recent years, that's no longer an option. Um, last year, the city tendered it out um, and uh, AAA striping and seal coating was the sub subcontractor to the main contractor that did the line painting. Um, the RFT this year was released. There was only one bid. It was the same company, AAA Striping and Seal Coatings. Um, and the bid amount was $7,400 less than last year's bid. Uh, so administration is recommending that the, um, that the RFP be awarded to AAA Striping the Seal Coating for the tendered amount of $26,000 plus applicable taxes. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Fountain is a mover. Do you have any comments? Uh, yes. Uh, when this type of service is uh, provided to us like it was last year, is there someone within the administration or staff uh, that's going to check the work? I guess if I recall correctly, some of those, some of those lines are pretty uh, basic, or that's not the right word. They were, uh, well, they were certainly uh, abstract. Let's put it that that's way, better. modern art. Uh, so it would be nice to know that what we're paying for is, is going to be effective, certainly, all that last year. Yeah, so typically the administration does go have a look after the case, and then I'm, I'm sure if the deficiency is noted, then there'll have to be a discussion of how to address the deficiencies. The difficult thing with paint on the asphalt is once it's down, you're kind of stuck with what's there, but um, that's something that we typically look at. Uh, after the fact, perhaps it's a tourist attraction of some kind. I don't know. Thank you. Thank you. Thomas McMurdo. Uh, yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, I, I had a couple questions. The first, uh, Anthony, you mentioned that Manitoba Infrastructure used to uh, used to provide the painting service. Was that at, at cost to the city of Thompson? Uh, yes, it was at cost to the city of Thompson. And it was, I believe, between fifteen to 20000 a year. Okay, uh, very good. And then um, just in terms of the, the 26K, the, the scope is the entire 34 kilometers of roads identified in the memo. That's, that's what we get for the money or? Yes, the road would have been laid out in the RFP document. That's the standard document that's used every year by the infrastructure department. Okay, well, thank you. Councillor Valentino. Uh, thank you, Mayor Smook. I'll be supporting the resolution. It's nice to see it's come in under budget, uh, hoping that the quality is, is good. In terms of the completion date of June 15th, it says weather permitting, is there gonna be something built into the holdback or in, in the agreement if it doesn't get done in the timely manner is June 15th? There are typically clauses that are to the agreements with respect to that. Uh, the issue is, um, it's very difficult to know when, when the different contractors come, but this is a new contractor. Uh, last year, the uh, main contractor was late. And this subcontractor came and did the painting. So their, main, their first subcontractor didn't show up. So this is the second one. So this year we'll have to see what their, their record is for when they show up. Thank you. Pastor Wong. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I still think uh, this, I would strongly suggest that we should have an, uh, another meeting with the province, like the highway eventually, to come back with a joint effort for painting. One of the reasons they drop it because of most, of, like a few years in a row, when the, the painter come up to Thompson, Thompson Street is not even swept yet. So that's why they kind of frustrated 
So they drop it, they say no longer want to partner with us. So I'd like to have some sort of conversation because it do save a lot of money from our end in the end because we share the service. So that conversation, I, I strongly suggest administration have that conversation with them again, just to uh, work with them with the timing uh, fashion. So we'll be, uh, we'll be we'll benefit for us in the future. So with that, I uh, also uh, support this uh, because it's cheaper now compared to last year, probably because of this uh, paper, probably paid it straighter. So less paid, so cheaper. Anyway, uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Fong. Uh, thank you again, Madam Mayor. I just want to make sure that we're not paying to paint roads that we're going to be fixing right afterwards. Um, did we take into account the exit work uh, in planning where we would be painting to ensure that that doesn't happen? I'll have to double check that matter to see which ones are found to be painted. Uh, typically, when road work is done, repainting of the road is part of that. Um, so I think it'd have to be an assessment on the safety of that road work. But I don't have that detail. I'll have to check and see if any of the ISIP roads are, were planned to be painted this year. A follow up then. So, if in terms of safety, we're going to have to bring back a painter to paint newly asphalted roads. Did I misunderstand you? Yes, you misunderstood. So, the contract for the road requires them to paint what they what I they paid. Okay, thank you. So they they fix it once they're done. Thank you, Mr. Valentino. Did you did you yeah, thank you, Mayor Smook. I just uh, a little bit of the clarifying points there is the province is completely out of the line painting business. It's not just the city of Thompson that they don't do anymore. Um, it's something that they do not entertain it in any city or municipality in the province, which has caused a lot of problems. It's maybe something within our region that we should start looking jointly with communities because there were some cities within our own region that never even got them painted last year. So I think the conversation is more working to, within your region and with neighboring communities, not with the province, because they are not in the line painting business across the province. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you Madam Mayor. Um, my comments is cheaper is not always better, even though we don't, if we can get less, that's okay. But last year, if I had a fall of the painting, I probably would have been charged with impaired driving because it was that bad. I know around the pizza area going up to the future lights, it was just wobbly like this. And there's a lot of spots like that. So I do hope that we are checking it. We shouldn't be paying for work that's not quality. And certainly, uh, again, yes, it's nice to say we're saving 74 55. We want to save every dollar that we can, but we're not getting the product that we want. That's a problem for us. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I, any other comments, councillors? Uh, Chair. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I realize I've spoken twice already. Just an idea with the uh, new roads being paved, is there maybe an opportunity to look at a product that would um, integrate some sort of marking system into the actual road surface itself, as opposed to requiring painting in the future? You might be able to look at to avoid having to incur these costs. I wouldn't have any, uh, I wouldn't know about that. We'll have to ask the engineers. Yeah, I'm not aware point. of any, but if there is some means or ways to save, that'd be nice to see. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, I too was there when conversations were had that uh, the province is totally out of line painting and in talking to other uh, peoples at AMM, even last year, there was a lot of communities around the province that didn't get uh, their lines painted. Uh, because the province is out of it. And even some of the reasoning uh, that line painting was uh, stalled so long is that uh, there was some contractors that assumed uh, their times and hopefully that they uh, got better sense of them and uh, don't take as long or give more uh, thorough uh, tender for time rise. Uh, home for the question, who's in favor of this? All right. Carrie. Aye. 6.6 .6 is a resolution to approve uh, the credit arrangements. Resolution 022058. Uh, moved by Councillor Pru. Uh, can I have a seconder, please? Second. Deputy Mayor of Landmark. Um, 
whereas Section 173.1 of the Municipal Act provides authority for a municipality to borrow money for resolution by resolution for operating expenses during the fiscal year, providing the amount borrowed does not exceed the amount collected in taxes and grants in lieu of taxes in the previous fiscal year. Now, therefore, be it resolved that Council authorize the credit arrangements of $3 million overdraft between the City of Thompson and the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce. And be it further resolved that all sums borrowed under this resolution will be supported by a charge upon the whole of the revenues of City of Thompson. Ms. Rachel? Now, this is a yearly resolution that comes to Council for a review uh, for the credit arrangements with the bank. Um, it's not an overdraft that we've used uh, for many years, uh, but it's something that is brought before Council every year, should Council need it in the future. Thank you. Um, Councilor Prue, is a mover? Um, nothing there. Councilor Ellsworth? Thank you, Madam Mayor. And certainly thank you, City Manager, for clarifying one of the points I was going to make in regards to when was the last time this arrangement was used? And it's been many, many years. I don't think we need it personally. I think that if you look through our reserves and this council has the authority to, to move money if it needs to, it's there. It's not like we're broke. So I don't think we need it. And secondly, and probably more importantly, I spoke to uh, this or this issue in, in the committee of the whole as well. Uh, we have seen to be going with the one bank for many, many years. And whether we cost us any money or not, it has the potential to cost you money. That potential is there. That's why we do it. And this should have been put out for an FRP as far as I'm concerned. So any other bank could have bet on it. And we have been going, in fact, to me, it's catering to one bank. And that should not be. I think at least every five years, you should be able to shop it around to save money for this city when you can. And so I would definitely not support it for that reason that I believe it should have been sent out for everyone else in this city to look at. We got more than one bank or institution there. Thank you. Councillor McMurdo. Uh, yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. Um, just uh, wanted to say for the public that, yeah, that is correct that we did have the discussion about uh, shopping around for um, for our financial service provider at last committee of the whole and um, council has given administration the direction to do that um, outside of this uh, one specific arrangement. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Valentino. Uh, thank you, Mayor Smook. I'll be supporting this uh, resolution tonight, similar to what Council McMurdo said that we have already given direction to administration um, to, to look at that outside of this. Um, to look at the different uh, banking opportunities that maybe we should be looking at, but it was outside of this issue. Um, and thank you for the clarifications. So the public's aware it's not something that we, we've used uh, this operating line, but it does give us the ability for our day-to-day -day if we do need to. We do have the reserves, but it's a process to be able to use money out of there um, with uh, public hearings as it's part of the financial plan to have to start to use that money. So this just gives us the ability to continue to operate and it's something uh, under the municipal act that we're following. So I'll be supporting it as is, thank you. Thank you. Other councillors? Councillor Wong? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I know this is the housekeeping uh, uh, resolution. And for the many years, I always uh, support that, but now I have a different point of view because to me, the line of credit is kind of like a, a credit card, the temptation is there. So to me, I don't want to make that as a, as a part of the uh, idea. So they have a $3 million standby to, to do it. And a matter of fact, I believe uh, as uh, Councillor Ellsworth uh, mentioned, we do have enough uh, reserves. That's all about how you're managing. That's why we uh, hire a professional to do our financial, to, to make sure that the city should be running smoothly without any hiccup. So, and also we should have some rainy day, rainy day fund put aside in case. So this is many, many years already. So we should know in September, what kind of scenario and financial scenario that we are facing. So since I, we never, for many, many years, we never touched that. So that means the, the financial part is pretty, pretty solid. So to me, it, to have another uh, open uh, uh, opportunity to, uh, to, to use the money is, not really necessary in my opinion. So, and uh, that is one of the reasons that I would not really support this time. 
of the overdraft. I don't think we need it. We, don't, we shouldn't have that kind of a thing to stand by since we don't have a financial issue for that part. So it's just like I say again, like a kind of a temptation. So I don't like to have that kind of a arrangement. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Councilor McMurdo. Uh, yeah, thanks again, Madam Mayor. Uh, I, I just wanted to say that I, I disagree with uh, Councilor Wong's comment that this agreement uh, somehow represents a temptation for administration to, to somehow misuse public funds. I, I don't think that's fair. Thanks. Thank you. Councilor Valentino. Thank you, Mayor Smook. My comments are identical. In no way is this any form of temptation for our administration. And I certainly hope that they aren't uh, taking it that way because I definitely don't support that comment. This is a corporation and, and it's ran and it's part of running a corporation effectively. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comments? Thank you, Matt Mayor. Uh, I tend to agree with the comments made uh, with regards to shopping around for good rates. That said, I don't see a rate associated here. Uh, we haven't used it, so maybe it's a little bit uh, unnecessary. To, well, it's not unnecessary to ask, but it might be a uh, Certainly something we don't want to get worked up about. If we know what the rate is, I'd like to know. I'll have to pull it, but I believe all the rates are provided at the committee of the whole. So it'll be on the agenda with the last. Mm -hmm. Councillor Wong. Uh, I just want to uh, respond to some of my colleague's comment. So based on the response from the administration, it's been many, many years we never use it. So why are we having it again? It's not part of it, the, the way of create an opportunity or chances or down the road, maybe let, that's why I use a temptation. It's not like I say they wanted to do that. I'm just saying like, based on the data, we never use it, why would we need it? So I think I'm not out of the line by saying that word, but somehow my colleague tried to attack me by that word. So whatever, it is what it is. Thank you. Thank you. Anthony? Uh, Councillor Fountain is correct. There was no rate provided. Okay. Follow up, please. So obviously that's a bit alarming. <laughs> we should know what rate we're gonna pay if we decide to use it, knowing full well that we haven't used it for a long time. I just want to say that I feel like we're kind of getting into a position fiscally where this is becoming more and more likely that it would be, it could be used. Um, so I think things like that, like certainly the rate should be known. Um, up around, we should know what the rate is to be able to decide what's better. Um, Something as simple like that missed in this, I won't be supporting. Yeah, I just want to say, Madam Mayor, in the meeting with the discussion we had, I was the one that actually brought forth the 2.75%, that which equates to about 81,000 a year it was used. There was no other rate brought forward. It wasn't uh, accepted or denied that, that would be the rate. But usually a bank wants a little bit more than just the, the, the prime, most banks do. And, and, and to uh, Councillor Wong's comment, I personally did not take that he was attacking our administration. I understand these things. I've been around the enough budget meetings, enough financial meetings that I hear what he was saying. I would hope that he would not be thinking that there was any issue with our administration. So that's not the message that I received. Uh, again, I'll be very clear. I would hope that he did not mean that in a, in a, in a way that they might misuse it, because I don't think he said that. So I don't think we need to get into a contest where we're fighting with each other over a few words that's made. And he did clarify himself, so thank you. Thank you, sir. Councilor McMurdo. Uh, yeah, thanks, Madam Mayor. I know I spoke twice. Um, I, I, I was mistaken. I, based on the last meeting, I was um, operating under the what Councilor Ellsworth had said about uh, the 2.75. Uh, percent. Um, so that's a good catch, I would say, by Councillor Fountain. And um, without uh, a rate in place, then I, I won't be supporting this tonight. And I think if we were to move forward on it, maybe we table it and bring that information back. <laughs> I realize we have debated it now for a while. Thanks. Thank you. Councillor Landmark, or Deputy Mayor Landmark. Hey, um, yeah, this $3 million is like a we're, we're talking about a, a line of credit for the interim if there's something that went wrong between now and September, right? Is it, when, when we get our taxes, we're not worried about this anymore. It's just something that the, the Manitoba municipalities allows us uh, 
and, and the act allows us to do to make sure that everything's all right without going back to trying to use reserves or whatever for the interim, not to go out and spend this money. Everything we spend is supposed to be under through the budget unless we go through a number of meetings to do so. And I'll be supporting this. Thank you. Uh, it's your third time, but I will. Um, and, and we should check to see if that's in the bylaw because I don't think you put that in there. I don't think that exists anymore in the bylaw, by the way. Um, uh, I just want to remind council of their fiduciary duty. I'll leave it at that. Uh, there's every likelihood that we won't ever use this, but there's a possibility that we might. And if you're going to vote on this, I would suspect that it would be wise to know what the rate is going to be before you do that. Thank you. Um, this bylaw we've uh, voted on for seven years that uh, I've been on council on that. Uh, basically, it's just for an emergency fund. If, as per Councillor Fountain, <coughs> we're sitting pretty for a fire uh, that incident that comes through here, uh, a flood or something, that we need money fast that maybe even it's government money that comes back to us later, but we might need access to dollars. That's sort of the idea that we were explained years ago that that's what this fund for. Yes, you can replace it out of the reserves or you can replace it other ways, but if you take money out of the reserves, you're gonna to have to have your public hearing. It's gonna be two or three weeks before we can even get, at least to the earliest, before we can get permission to use those reserve dollars. And if we use them, it would be illegally if we did otherwise. So that was always the uh, intent of this is just, it was definitely just an emergency fund. So thank you very much. Uh, uh, Councilor Pru? Um, yeah, I guess going off of what uh, uh, Councilor Townsend uh, said was about the not knowing the interest rate. I think I would move to table it till we at least know that we the, the interest rate. Are you making a motion to table, yeah. sir? Yeah, I'll second that. Okay, motion, motion by Andre Pru to table this until next week. Yeah, next week. April 11th? Yeah. Okay, seconded by Councillor Fountain. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, all those opposed? Carry. <coughs> Next, we're going to um, 6.6 .6 is a resolution to approve the hardware rental software license and services agreement for Dominion Building <coughs> Systems. Resolution 2022059, moved by Councillor Ellsworth, second by Councillor Proof. Whereas the City of Thompson has agreed to implement electronic vote counting for the 2022 municipal and school board election. And whereas administration recommends the sole sourcing, the delivery of the electronic vote counting to Dominion Voting Systems Corporation for a total cost of $45,340 plus apropos taxes. Now, therefore, be it resolved that council approve the hardware rental software license and service agreements between the City of Thompson and Dominion Voting System Corporation, effective March 31st, 2022, at a cost not to exceed $45,340 <coughs> plus apropos taxes, subject to the approval of bylaw 2019-2022, vote counting machine bylaw. Administration. In the two previous general elections of the City of Thompson, along with the School District History Lake, um, electronic vote counting has been used. Um, the previous two elections were also using Dominion systems. The Dominion system uses the Elections Ontario machines. Um, the quote was sought for this year's election, brought back. It has also been shared with the School District of Mystery Lake, who said they've had no concerns with the proposed uh, setup here. Um, so this is being recommended by administration to pass um, so that we can order these for October to be ready for the October elections. Thank you, Councillor Ellsworth. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, first of all, I have a question. Uh, that money, that money is shared right with the school board. Yeah. Correct. Um, all general election costs are split 50-50 between the school district of Mystery Lake and the city of Thompson. So it's 45 to 22-5 for us or whatever. Yeah. That's correct. 
Well, I, I think, uh, I mean, I don't know anyone else, but I've been involved in elections where you didn't get results till four o'clock in the morning, and I don't know anyone who enjoys doing that. Um, I think they work well. I don't seem to have an issue with it myself personally, and certainly I'll support it. Thank you. Thank you. Any other counselors, comments? Councilor Brown? Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, just want to mention to the public that should the machines have a failure or an issue, a uh, vote count will take place as per the last discussion we had last week. Uh, thanks for the clarification, administration. For that reason, I'll be supporting. Thank you. Any other counselors? Thank you. Uh, seeing no other uh, concerns, I definitely will be supporting this. I too have sat through a couple of them where it was after midnight before the votes started coming in. And in the last two elections, uh, it was very good. Um, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Um, we're going now into bylaws and bylaw 7.1 is the second reading of bylaw 2019-2022 vote counting machine bylaw amendment. Resolution 2022-060 moved by Councillor Ellsworth, seconded by Councillor Fountain. Be it resolved that bylaw 2019-2022, being a bylaw of the City of Thompson to amend bylaw 1912-2014, being a bylaw of the City of Thompson to authorize the use of vote counting machines <coughs> in the City Council and School Board elections in the City of Thompson, be given a second reading. Okay. So as noted in the last uh, resolution uh, now linked to this bylaw, um, to use vote counting machines, there must be a bylaw passed permitting that in the municipality. Um, the city of Thompson had an existing bylaw for the previous two elections, but uh, we have to update the dates in the existing bylaw to allow for the new voting. So that's really what this is before us, is to change the date from what the previous language of the bylaw was, and then to pass that for second or third reading, should that be counted as well. Thank you, Councillor Ellsworth. Okay. Uh, anything further comments from Councillors? Yeah, I'll just echo my comments from before, which were probably best placed here, that the, uh, <laughs> the, the, the vote count by hand will happen should there be some dispute about the vote. And in that sense, I'll be supporting this second and third reading. Thank you. Thank you. Seeing no other comments, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. <coughs> Seven point two is the third reading of the bylaw two zero one nine two zero two two. This will be a recorded vote when we uh, take this. One. Resolution two zero two two zero six one moved by <laughs> Councillor Fountain, seconded by Councillor Prue. Be it resolved that bylaw two zero one nine two zero two two be given third and final reading, and that it do now pass. Administration. Nothing further. Councillor Fountain. Any other? Questions, comments, council? Seeing none, call for the question. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Vote. We have Councillor Fountain, Councillor Prude, Councillor Wong, Councillor Ellsworth, Mayor Smook, uh, Deputy Mayor Lundmark, Councillor Valentino, and Councillor McMurdo. Thank you. Uh, the next two resolutions, the next resolution have been uh, lifted from the table. I uh, was apologize. I don't have a marriage report tonight. I was uh, out at meetings uh, today, and if uh, Angie uh, prepared prepared me a report, I didn't get back to the office to check it out. So thank you, uh, Anthony. Nothing. We'll bring the mayor's report to the committee, the whole as other reports. So we'll ensure that you have a mayor's report for next week. Okay. Thank you. Okay, and I have a call for adjournment. Councillor Ellsworth, Councillor Crew, all those in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thank you. Yeah, good night, everyone. Thanks. Thank you, Brian.